Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Fundamental Analysis Webinar with Abitrade. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting. Uh, as we get going, let's do a quick systems check. If you would, uh, just type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. OK, great. Thank you. I've got enough responses. Looks like we're up and running fine. Uh, as we get going, a couple things to keep in mind, as always. Uh, no one trade is without risk. Uh, any trade that you take obviously has the potential for losses, so you want to keep that in mind uh, with how you're managing your risk with trade size, stop loss. Uh, you may even use AVA Protect, which is a special feature available on our web trader platform and our AVA Trade Go mobile app uh, to help you manage risk. And we'll take a quick peek at that, by the way, uh, just to make sure you're aware of where to find AVA Protect because it really can be a, a nice part of your risk management uh, plan. But in some way, make sure you're managing risk because risk is certainly uh, involved with trading. The other side of that is each and every trade that you take does have a potential for nice profits, which is why we're all here, obviously, uh, to try and go after as much of those potential profits as possible uh, without risking things uh, beyond your tolerance. Now. Uh, what we go over is not meant to be taken as financial advisement, but should be taken uh, from an educational perspective. Now, real quick, what is fundamental analysis? Well, basically, it's the news. It's what's happening around the world. Uh, it, it's what's happening in terms of the headlines and, and global sentiment so that you get an idea of which way the wind is blowing, uh, so to speak so that we can uh, maybe have a preference in terms of what direction you might prefer to try and find entry points and exit points for different instruments. Now, uh, there are a couple different types of fundamental news uh, that, that we can look at. One would be uh, the type that's scheduled in, at regular times, what we might call regular economic events. And we'll take a peek at some that came in yesterday, PMI numbers, uh, factory production numbers, etc. We've got the NFP announcement, the non-farm payroll numbers out of the U.S. tomorrow. So, so these are things that uh, are regular economic events. We know what they'll be, we know when they'll be, and we also understand that they have the potential to move markets quite a bit. Uh, the other type of fundamental news would be what we might call extraordinary economic events. And these types of events uh, we'll look at some of the headlines today. They're just they're things that you just can't predict, like a global pandemic breaking out, or uh, you know there were different headlines back when when Brexit was the the top headlines each day. Uh, you just didn't know what the next headline would say. Was it good news? Was it bad news? And 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 each and every you know headline that hit about that topic was swinging markets one direction or another unpredictably. So that's another type of fundamental news that we need to contend with. And I would say that we can take advantage of, uh, usually with pending orders for, for the unexpected type of news, and, and many times with market moves with the known news. So there are a couple different ways of, uh, of preparing for these different types of fundamental news, and we'll go over those today as we go over the live charts and, and take a look at the news articles. Uh, welcome, Morris, you're saying you're in. That's nice, welcome to the event. Uh, okay, if anyone has any questions or comments as we go along, uh, please type in the chat box whatever you'd like to share or whatever your question might be. I'm happy to address any questions or to share any information uh, that might be pertinent to our discussions. So uh, this is our main website. We'll get we'll get back on here uh, to take a look at maybe our, our web trader platform, look at ABA Trade Go and the, the ABA Protect feature just to make sure you're aware of that. But real quick, let's take a look at uh, the main headlines. And, and literally this took me no more than five minutes uh, to pull up these headlines to get an idea of what is the sentiment today? What is the fundamental news telling us? And so uh, it seems like repetitive themes all around the world. China imposes restrictions as Delta reaches nearly half the country. We're not talking about the airline. Delta Airlines, we're talking about the Delta strain of the COVID virus. So uh, don't don't run out necessarily and buy Delta stock because we're talking about the virus. And uh, yeah, it reach, reaches nearly half 
the country now. Uh, so that's not good news. The second largest economy in the world, all of a sudden having the new strain of the virus spreading and imposing restrictions. Okay, what's the next headline show us? Oil drops towards 70 as virus concerns weigh. We're starting to get a feel for the sentiment, right? Oil drops towards 70 as virus concerns weigh. U.S. COVID-19 cases hit six-month high at over 100,000. Uh, again, the same theme here, kind of uh, negative, gloomy headlines uh, focused on the virus outbreak and uh, with, with this new Delta uh, variant spreading rapidly. Next headline, Sydney suffers worst day of pandemic, Victoria State to enter sixth lockdown. Again, gloomy headlines, not good news, uh, that major countries all around the world are administering new lockdowns, putting new measures in, uh, worrying about virus spread, oils dropping uh, or has dropped because of fears of uh, maybe demand going down as uh, large countries countries, large economies are starting to go back into restrictions and lockdowns. Uh, okay, maybe it's not going to be as bad as the first time around, right? With When the pandemic first hit, because a lot of people are vaccinated and, and the vaccine seems to be working at least somewhat against the new strain to protect people. Uh, but still, you can see the headlines. You can see what the, the sentiment is. Uh, next headline, we already saw that one. Next headline, Asian stocks hold gains dollar strong on Fed official comments. Okay, so when you see the first part, Asian stocks hold gains. That doesn't sound like a market that's ready to go roaring up, right? It's holding the gains, like it's just hanging on and uh, just waiting for a reason to drop. That headline almost sounds like Asian stocks hold gains. And then we see the second half of that headline, dollar strong on Fed official comments, okay? They're talking about the feds in the U.S. making monetary decisions, uh, making decisions about monetary policy moving forward. And uh, a person who's usually rather dovish in his comments was what they call hawkish in a recent comment yesterday. And what I mean by hawkish is talking about the fact that, hey, maybe we do need to cut back on stimulus sooner rather than later. OK, kind of surprised some people. And so that causes the U.S. dollar maybe to strengthen if there's some some fear out there that, uh, hey, maybe they're going to raise interest rates you know, sooner than we expected. Maybe they're not going to wait until 2023. Maybe they're going to do it next year. Or, or, or maybe even they mentioned the bond buying program, which is helping to prop up the economy in the U.S., uh, being cut back even this year is part of what this person also said when they're saying uh, that, that the Fed official comments strengthened the USD. So, so if there's, you know, rising uh, belief that some of these stimulus measures, and this keeps creeping up each week, fear that some of these stimulus measures might be pulled back in the U.S. that causes the U.S. dollar to strengthen them because they say, oh, less, less free money being handed out in the U.S., then the U.S. dollar should strengthen. Uh, but we'll see with all of these fears hitting uh, that we looked at all these headlines out of the U.S., out of uh, Australia out of China, all these fears about the virus. Well, then maybe uh, the U.S. will say, ah, maybe maybe we don't need to cut stimulus measures just yet. Uh, if if there's you know lockdowns in the future, then the stimulus would still be needed, right? So it, it's this kind of back and forth yo-yo movement of you know will they cut stimulus in the U.S.? Won't they? We think they will. Now we think they won't, and now again they think maybe they will. Uh, but uh, it's kind of a balancing act going on right now with countries saying, OK, the economies are doing better. Uh, and, and if we look at some of the announcements that came out of Great Britain, PMI numbers better than expected yesterday. Uh, I think I'm looking at yesterday. Yes, yesterday. PMI numbers better than expected out of Great Britain. Uh, also the same in the U.S. Uh, we had some uh, PMI numbers down here, non-manufacturing PMI better than expected. Uh, so that's that's the good news side. The economies are doing better than expected. The bad news side is, is inflation getting too high? Maybe they're doing too good. If the purchasing managers index shows a, a, a rapid rise in 
in purchasing and prices that they're having to pay, then, then there's fear that, well, are those prices rising faster than people's incomes? Are those prices rising too fast? Is the economy roaring too quickly back? Uh, and, and that's been some of the fear. And, and as we look at uh, the other side of the coin yesterday, the non-farm employment numbers, they're predicting instead of almost 700,000 new jobs, only 330,000. So uh, what happens is if there's rising prices for purchasing managers index, and, and that looks like good news, but, but then uh, the number of new jobs being created is not what is needed or not what's expected. So uh, that creates kind of a, a bit of tension there between prices rising and are the jobs and employment figures keeping up. And so kind of a mixed bag, I think, out of those numbers yesterday. And, and as we go forward tomorrow, the biggest announcements each, each month out of the U.S., non-farm payroll numbers, expected 870,000 jobs. Well, that, is, that those ADP numbers I just showed you yesterday showed the expectation that the advanced data shows maybe only 370,000 new jobs or so. So uh, if that happens, boy, that could create some fear. So look out through tomorrow with these non-farm payroll jobs coming out. Uh, with these numbers coming out, and also keep an eye on the average hourly earnings. What level of pay is 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 occurring? Are earnings going up, or did they stay flat? And, and those two things really will tell the tale tomorrow as to how the markets react. And it could cause some huge, huge movements, likely will, on the major indices, on gold, on oil, etc. Okay. Uh, PMI stands for Purchasing Managers Index, Tabello. Good question. So, uh, and, and in general, what if you have a question about one of these announcements and you say, well, I don't even know what that means, PMI or ADP, non-farm employment. So if you pull up the announcement, we see here composite PMI. Just click on the announcement on this platform and it tells you what it is. It tells you exactly what it measures. It shows you the prior numbers what the trend was, the actual compared to the forecast, compared to the previous, everything's here to help you understand, well, what is it exactly that you're looking at? Okay, uh, very good question. In general, if the purchasing manager's index is higher than expected, that's a sign of inflation. That's a, a sign of good demand for products, right? But the problem is, is the inflation too high? And, and if so, then maybe the countries will cut back on stimulus which then the markets have fear and you have a sell-off on the stocks. If stimulus measures are cut back, if, if interest rates are going to be raised back up to slow down the price increases, then, then you could see uh, maybe a sell-off on the market. So we've got to keep our eye on these things. So right now, in general, after 10 minutes of, of looking at some headlines and some numbers, what do we think is the sentiment, positive or negative today? China, China imposes restrictions. Oil drops. COVID cases rising in the U.S., Sydney going into lockdown with worst day of pandemic, et cetera. What is the sentiment today? Positive or negative? Negative, right? It's pretty obvious. Those headlines look pretty negative. Okay. European stocks, by the way, started up today. So could have, we'll take a look at some of the indices uh, and, and see you know, is there maybe an opportunistic spot if you think the markets might sell off a bit today? We'll see. Uh, so uh, I, I mentioned our Avatrade Go mobile app. You just point at trading platforms, go to Avatrade Go. This is on our main website. You can download it to any mobile device from the Google Play App Store, or the Apple App Store, depending on your operating system. And it has, you see Ava Protect, which is available on gold, silver, FX pairings. It has the ability, if you program the take profit and stop loss, it'll calculate your potential profit, how much you're risking to your stop loss price. It does all of that for you in the order window before you buy or sell. So you're fully informed of uh, what you're risking, what's your potential profit, how much has to go to margin to open the trade, et cetera. It's all there for you in the order window when you use our app. And also if you log in here from our main website, you have those same features in the order window in the web trader platform. And both our app and the web trader trade right on top of your MT4 and MT5 accounts. You could switch between accounts by clicking here. 
and you can switch to your demo account, switch to your live account, and there are advanced features as well on this platform. If you go to Trading Central, you've got all kinds of different features. Market, Market Buzz gives you some fundamental news already found for you from thousands of locations across the internet, different publications. We can see what's trending the most. Morgan Stanley is trending quite a lot, 439 articles found recently. And you could pull up, well, what's the most recent article about uh, this instrument? And you can go right to the, the article, the source of the article, and read it. Okay? So, uh, very cool features on our web trader platform. There are also free signals that, do, that does your technical analysis for you. So, check out the platform. It's very nice uh, to use. Now, let's go ahead on the MT4 platform, which I know uh, many of you are familiar with if you've been trading for a while. And uh, also, those of you that are new, you might say, well, why don't I just use the signals and trade? And I would say the signals are nice, but it's also nice to understand how to do your own technical analysis. And uh, I like the charts on the MT4 to do technical analysis. They're very sharp and clear. Our web trader charts are very nice as well. Uh, but I think for, for the dinosaurs out there who are used to MT4, I like to do the webinars. Uh, my charting on the MT4, at least for now, till more of you get used to our web trader platform. So uh, let's take a look at some of the movements. I'll get rid of some of these lines from what we drew uh, in the last session. And, and boy, it worked out well if you were trading on the ranging movement that we were looking at earlier in the week. It kept ranging between the resistance and the support. And so we said trade down from the resistance, trade up from the support, up and down, up and down. That, so what we call a ranging movement, okay? And so let's expand on that chart and let's get rid of the old lines I drew. We'll delete all these lines and we'll start over. Although those lines are very nice, we'll probably draw them again. Uh, in fact, let's draw them now. So some of them, here's our resistance. Here's our support. And we say, okay, it's been a ranging movement. And you say, well, the S&P 500 is near the resistance now. It's much closer to the resistance than it is the support. And didn't we say we saw negative sentiment today? I'd say, yes, most of you typed negative. I don't, not everyone answered, but any answers said that you thought there was negative sentiment today. And so what usually happens to major indices when there's negative sentiment about viruses breaking out and economies being shut down uh, and even some bullish statements from the feds in the US uh, talking about maybe cutting back on the bond buying program even this year already, that creates maybe some fear on Wall Street. And I think we're in a situation where it might be hard for the S&P 500 to break this resistance level up here. It could, obviously, so we'll manage our risk. Uh, but in this simulation, it might make sense to say, okay, sentiment's on our side to short the S&P 500. Let me go ahead and put a trade size that makes sense for your balance. If you like the information, you sell, and then you put your stop loss, just click and drag on the line, and put your stop loss above the resistance. It's going to have to take some positive momentum to break through this resistance level, right? Since last week, we've been trading on this resistance. Every time it got close, sell. Every time it got near the support, buy. It got close to the resistance, sell. So here we are again. Uh, it's closer to the resistance than it is the support. We have fundamental news reasons in the headlines to think maybe it'll, it'll challenge the support level down here before it even tries to go up and break the resistance. So... Fundamentally, this move makes sense. I'll put my take profit maybe before the resistance, right? Or before the support, right there. So the support level I drew here might take a lot of momentum to break that support. So it doesn't even have to break a support level to reach our take profit. In order to hit our stop loss, it has to have momentum to break the resistance. So we've got the technical analysis on our side and we've got the fundamental news on our side. With this type of setup, the hope is you can win more than 50% of the time. And really, you only need to win maybe 40% of the time or 35% of the time to profit because what we're risking is half 
what our potential profit is approximately. Okay, so this is the idea of uh, saying, okay, I would prefer to sell when I'm close to the resistance, which we're doing. And I also would pr prefer to sell when the sentiment is negative for this instrument, which it is. So here we go. That's a great entry point. And uh, hey, if you're a scalper, you could already close it. We're in profit already, right? Didn't take long to overcome the small spread that we have. Okay, so now could we do this same idea? What about European indices, not just US? Or what about uh, you know the, the Nikkei or some of the Asian indices? Sure, of course you could. Let's look at the DAX. The DAX also looks like in the last four hours trying to drop off. Uh, we've got a resistance level here, okay? Resistance, 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 resistance. It broke through once, it became support, and then broke below and it became resistance again. That's classic support becoming resistance once the support is broken. And now we see it again, resistance, resistance, resistance. So you could just as easily say, okay, I'm going to sell on the DAX. I'm gonna put my stop loss above the resistance. And I'm going to put my take profit before the next support level down here. Okay, better than two to one profit to risk ratio. Uh, and there you go. Now I like the S&P 500 setup better because it had a nicer resistance level. But uh, fundamentally, this is the same move because it's such a global economy. What what's bad for the U.S. economy is also bad for the European econo economy typically. What's bad for the Asian economy is also bad for the European and the U.S. economy, et cetera. OK, so uh, it, not that you need to make a move on both of these instruments, but uh, just as an example, you can set up on both if you want. OK, now we've got to overcome the spread on the on, on the second move. We're in nice profit on the first one. Uh, OK, so let's take a look then at oil. We, we saw crude oil in the headlines, so why not look at crude oil? We see if you're wanting to short it, okay, well, it's already dropped quite a bit. Uh, these are the four hour candles. We see it's been dropping all week. Again, these virus fears have been going all week. If you were paying attention Tuesday in our webinar, uh, we, were, we were already talking about virus fears. If you were paying attention last week, we were talking about the fears of this new strain and that it could weigh on commodities like oil. Well, it has. Uh, if we zoom in from the four hour candles, say go to 30 minute, we see this is a strong downtrend. Each time it tries to climb, look at the spike down. And we see it's like a staircase down, right? One step breaks the, the support, drops. It forms another support, breaks that one, that becomes resistance. It forms another support, breaks that and goes down, forms, forms the next step down. So here's our, our resistance right here, okay? This was support on the new step down. Support, support, broken becomes resistance. Classic, support becoming resistance. And now here we are, it got near that resistance and down it went. So we missed our mark on this, right? If we'd have looked at this before we looked at uh, the US 500, instead of being 160 in profit on the US 500, we would have gotten in on oil from the resistance level because down it went from the resistance. Why is oil giving in to the resistance level and dropping? Every step, support breaks, resistance holds, support breaks, resistance holds, support breaks, resistance holds. Why is it doing that? The sentiment is negative. That's why the fundamental news is so important. Instead of buying from the support levels, which keep breaking and you'd be losing, you're selling from the resistance levels, which keep holding because of the, the, the fundamental news about the spread of the virus, the fear of lockdowns now in China and Australia and the US in the European Union, et cetera, okay? Oh, good question. Shane is asking about something other than the COVID situation. Uh, and by the way, if, if, you, if you want uh, to trade on oil and you think you want to short oil, but you don't like the entry point, you could put a pending order in case oil spikes back up. You could put a pending oil order up here on oil. Okay, a pending order on oil from maybe up around 69. If it comes back up to the resistance, a, a, 
a sell limit pending order would sell. You also could put a buy limit pending order above the resistance. If the news swings, if the sentiment changes, it should easily break through the resistance and you could have a buy stop pending order up here waiting for the breakthrough because you never know. Remember, there's two types of, of news, the kind you know and the kind that you don't know yet, the kind that could come anytime. So, you know, if, if, if a headline comes that, that is bullish for oil, you know, maybe maybe uh, the, the OPEC plus nations decide we're not going to increase production. We're going to cut production because of the increased Delta virus. Uh, you'd see oil break this resistance and go flying up dramatically. And you could have a buy stop pending order up here above one of these resistance levels, just waiting just in case there's a headline that swings the market, an unexpected headline that could turn oil bullish. You can't pretend to, to know everything. And so that's the point. Trade with what you know, which would be selling from this resistance with the negative headlines and prepare for the unknown. Put a buy stop above the resistance level in case the news swings. OK, it's very simple, this concept. And it, and it works very, very well many times. Uh, if I'm a scalper, I can say, OK, I took advantage of the sentiment. Let me take my $150 profit. I'll close that one. I'm up $100 in, in a short, short while. Right. Or you stick with it through the day because it seems like that's the sentiment for the day. Yeah, Tabello, exactly. You can use the headlines to determine fear and confidence of the market. Well put. Very, very succinct the way you said it. Uh, okay, so Bank of England rate decision was the next question I saw. So let's go to the, the fundamental news and take a look what's happening today. And when I say today, I mean very soon. Uh, there's a rate decision coming up out of the UK in 33 minutes. So just as we end the webinar, there's a rate decision coming out of the United Kingdom. And so and it's not just a rate decision. There's an inflation report. There's the Bank of England MPC vote cut. Uh, is there going to be a vote uh, vote hike or, or rate change? I should say that decision is being made. Uh, so, you know, what happens if the Bank of England interest rate, they decide they're going to raise the interest rate to stave off inflation? Maybe they think, OK, we kept the rates low long enough. The economy's doing well and they unexpectedly raise the interest rate. I don't think they will, by the way, but hypothetically, if they did, you'd see the Great Britain pound strengthen like crazy if there was an unexpected rate hike, because higher interest rate on a currency strengthens the value of the currency, right? Keeping interest rates artificially low weakens the currency in general. So if the decision comes out and it, it's as expected, it stays at 0.1% interest then it's kind of a, a non-factor. It doesn't, no one's expecting a rate change. So if it stays the same, that's what was expected, no big deal. Probably not going to move the strength of the pound or move the, the UK stocks and, and indices uh, much. But even if the rate stays the same, or what if they lower it instead of raising it unexpectedly, then you see the pound weaken like crazy, right? That could happen as well. So. Uh, you, you just don't know for sure what they'll do. The expectation is they're not going to change the interest rate yet. I suspect that's probably going to be the case. But you also have to listen to what they say, right? Or what's written in the meeting minutes that will be released. As, you, as they start combing over the minutes from the meeting to understand, well, what did they think about the policy going forward? Not, not just the rate decision today, but what will the meeting minutes say uh, what would their statements say about the near monetary policy moving forward over the next year or two? And, and many times the, the decision now is dovish. They'll leave the interest rate low, maybe. But the talk could be bullish in the minutes. And if that's the case, that could strengthen the currency. OK, or if their talk is dovish, that could weaken the currency. So very big decision and then you also have jobless numbers coming out of the u.s as well initial jobless numbers which could create more fear if those numbers are higher than expected 
I don't know that we're going to have time for any of the soft commodities. I don't think we'll have time to look at wheat. Uh, and and uh, probably wheat takes a little bit of a synopsis and study uh, of the farming market, the, the weather reports, uh, the crop reports, that sort of thing. So, and I don't think we'd have time to do a good job on wheat. Okay, you're saying you have a quick question. You said when the advanced data payroll was announced, gold went up to 1831 due to negative news uh, and the volatility increased. Okay, so gold responds to whether there's fear of inflation or not on the US dollar. Gold is an inflationary safe haven, particularly tied to the strength of the US dollar. And so uh, the ADP numbers came out yesterday showing less job growth than expected, okay? Why would gold spike up with, with, with bad jobs numbers? Could be that bad jobs numbers, lower hiring than expected, would leave people to believe that the U.S. will keep the stimulus measures in place. And if, if the U.S. keeps the stimulus measures in place, that makes the U.S. dollar weak because the stimulus measures are ultra low interest rates, bond buying program. They have another stimulus package coming soon for infrastructure that keeps weakening the U.S. dollar. And if the weak, if the U.S. dollar is viewed as potentially weakening further, then that drives gold up as a safe haven from inflation, from inflationary uh, currency in, in the U.S. OK. And, and we see it in the PMI numbers as well. The purchasing manager index numbers are higher than expected. Prices are rising faster than expected. That's inflation. When prices are rising faster than expected, that drives people into gold. What drove gold back down? Fear of the China virus and, and uh, economies maybe being shut down because the fear of inflation drives gold up. Fear of deflationary measures, locking down economies, because of virus spread, that, that causes uh, the economy to slow down. And, and that's the opposite then. And people sell out of gold and buy back into the US dollar. So if it's fear of inflation, gold goes up. If it's fear of uh, a pandemic, which slows the economy down, well, then the opposite of inflation occurs and people actually rush out of gold as the market drops. Okay, so uh, we have a request for the NASDAQ. W what I'll say about the NASDAQ is it's similar to the S&P 500 that we talked about. And that is, uh, it's at a high point, okay? Here's the NASDAQ. It's at a high point and it's starting to drop. And there's no reason why with today's negative sentiment, you couldn't think that maybe the NASDAQ is due for a pullback. So. Uh, you know, whatever trade size makes sense for you, the NASDAQ for equal lot size moves more points. So be careful with your lot size. I'm making it smaller than the S&P 500 trade. And maybe I do a market sell. And I put my stop loss above the all-time high. I think it's an all-time high or, or today's high. No, it's an all-time high. One week candles, NASDAQ's never been higher. So what better situation can you have than to be able to put your stop loss above an all-time high without much distance to the stop loss and have the sentiment on your side with a global pandemic starting to spread again, right? I don't want to say a global pandemic's a good situation, but it is maybe for, for shorting the NASDAQ. Uh, the NASDAQ in particular, though, was more resilient against some of these fears because of the tech stocks. The S&P 500 more easily responds to the fear and drops. And the NASDAQ, because it has all these tech stocks in it that uh, actually did better during the pandemic. Think about all the online programs that people started using because of the pandemic. Well, those tech stocks did really well, better than, it, than the other sectors of the economy during the pandemic. So the NASDAQ actually was able to be more bullish than the other indices, which also actually did well with all the stimulus measures during the pandemic, but the NASDAQ in particular seems to be a little more resilient to not drop as easily with these fears. But I, I'm showing you this trade as a simulation that if you were wanting to short the NASDAQ, 
you don't have to get your stop loss very far away to be above the all-time high with your stop loss. So it would take some positive sentiment to break an all-time high. I think we all agree on that. It takes positive sentiments to break all-time highs. So we feel pretty safe with negative sentiment today to put our stop loss above what's an all-time high without having to have our stop loss very far away. And now I can put my take profit at the, the first support level that I like. And I, I would make three times what I'm risking if it just dropped to this first support level, which was an old resistance right here. Resistance, resistance down becomes a bit of a crossing level here, it's snaking up and down across this level. So this seems to be an important price level. It easily, the market easily could pull the NASDAQ down there today or tomorrow uh, leading up to the non-farm payrolls that are coming in tomorrow out of the US, okay? Very good questions. Uh, thank you for some of the questions that came in uh, regarding, especially about, about gold in particular. There's confusion. Everyone thinks, well, gold is a safe haven. That's the general knowledge that people have. And whenever there's fear, people think gold should go up. But the, the, the situation really seems to be that if the fear is about inflation, the economy could be doing great and doing so great that there's inflationary fears, then gold goes up with the, with the rising stocks. If the fear is about inflation, markets can be rising while gold goes up. If the fear is about the markets doing bad and selling off, gold tends to go down and the US dollar tends to strengthen against gold. Okay, so uh, those in a general sense, it's not 100% uh, correlation there, but in a general sense, that's what's happening with gold and fear. Okay, thank you everybody for joining. I think this is a good spot to stop. Uh, we simulated some scalp profits uh, with, with some of the, the trade simulations here on my demo. Uh, you certainly could hang on to positions longer like that and, and, and go after moves maybe to, to the actual support level that we drew and uh, be more patient with it. It's up to you. Uh, and also prepare for the unknown. Perhaps the market rises and hits our stop loss on sells and you have a buy stop ready to go to take advantage of an unexpected headline that swings the market the other way. It's smart many times to be prepared in that fashion. All right, everybody, thank you for joining. Till next time, good luck with your trading.